Welcome to the Defeating Epilepsy Foundation YouTube channel. In this presentation, we will discuss what Pinaeotopoulos Syndrome, Introduction to Epilepsy, Introduction to Pinaeotopoulos Syndrome, Clinical Features and Prognosis, Causes and Risk Factors, and the Future of Pinaeotopoulos Syndrome. Make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell to be notified of future videos. Please click on our donate link in the description section below and donate today. Your donation helps us to make a difference for those battling epilepsy. We appreciate your support. Pinaeotopoulos syndrome, PS, is a benign epileptic disorder primarily affecting children. This presentation will explore its clinical features, prevalence, causes, and the future of research and awareness. We'll examine how PS differs from other epilepsies and why it warrants attention from medical professionals and the public alike. In the United States, around 3 million adults and 480,000 children have epilepsy. Epilepsy is a neurological disorder that occurs when neurons transmit suddenly altered electrical signals in the brain, disrupting the normal neural pathway. When this happens, seizures can occur. Epilepsy is diagnosed when there is a recurrence of two unprovoked seizures within a 24-hour period. Seizures can come in many forms and vary from person to person. There are numerous signs and symptoms that can alert an individual when a seizure is occurring, temporary confusion, a dazed stare, unusual movements of the extremities, and loss of consciousness. Generally, seizures are categorized into two classes based on the location of brain abnormalities, focal seizures and general seizures. There are many types of epilepsy, one of them being Pinaeotopoulos syndrome. Pinaeotopoulos syndrome presents itself as a benign childhood syndrome, with characteristics of autonomic symptoms and shifting and or multifocal spikes, often in the occipital region of the brain during an electroencephalogram. The incidence of PS has been reported to be about 0.8 per 100,000 children younger than 16 years of age. Since PS is a fairly new childhood epileptic disorder, it therefore warrants serious attention from clinicians, general practitioners, health professionals, public health workers, and parents to appropriately address and treat it. A brief but thorough review will be done to provide important concepts and fundamental knowledge about this epileptic disorder. PS is a benign epileptic disorder affecting children that usually does not progress into significant neurodevelopmental problems. About three-quarters of children will have their first seizure between the ages of three and six. It affects both males and females equally. There are some key defining features of PS that make it distinguishable from other disorders. First is the presence of autonomic seizures and autonomic status epilepticus. Autonomic seizures cause an objective change in autonomic function. Autonomic status epilepticus is seizure activity that lasts for at least 30 minutes usually causing altered functioning of the autonomic nervous system either in the presence or non-presence of seizure onset. Pinaeotopoulos and others found that emetic symptoms accounted for about 72% of all autonomic manifestations in 47 patients, which can include nausea, vomiting, and retching. Other symptoms that may occur simultaneously include pallor, flushing, cyanosis, and coughing. Almost 70% of seizures can occur during sleep, as opposed to nearly 17% when awake or about 13% when the person is awakening. Moreover, most seizures can last for up to 30 minutes, with some even going up to 60 minutes. Localization of occipital spikes and encephalograms of children's brains with PS can be found although there have been normal readings too. Many studies have tried to understand the causes of PS since its discovery, though not much has been conclusive. Most of the research points to a genetic predisposition to idiopathic syndrome. In research conducted by Livingston and others, it was suspected that one family who had PS had a mutation in the SCN1A gene. The family member was reported to have a severe case of PS and a strong association of fever as a precipitating factor, febrile precipitant. However, other cases show that no SCN1A mutation was found in two sisters who had typical features of PS. They were also reported to have infrequent autonomic seizures and no febrile precipitants. Diagnosis is based on clinical features and EEG patterns. Occipital spikes are common 
but normal readings can also occur. Prognosis is generally benign, with most children not developing significant neurodevelopmental problems. Challenges can occur when misdiagnosis and underappreciation due to a lack of awareness among healthcare professionals occur. Awareness of PS requires the attention of multiple individuals. Due to the lack of research, Paneotopoulos syndrome warrants more attention to effectively diagnose, treat, and manage it among children. To better understand and reduce misdiagnosis and underappreciation of PS, primary doctors, psychiatrists, and clinical personnel need to undergo more training to figure out the distinct signs and symptoms of this disorder. Subsequently, it is required that patients feel more comfortable expressing their disorders and medical problems to assist health professionals to appropriate better treatments and interventions. Therefore, without further medical research and awareness, PS will continue to pose a potential health risk in the medical health community. Paneotopoulos syndrome, PS, is an idiopathic epilepsy syndrome affecting about three-quarters of children under 16 years of age. PS presents with autonomic seizures, often during sleep, with symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and pallor. These distinctive autonomic features, alongside shifting brain activity on EEGs, help distinguish PS from other epilepsies. While the exact cause remains a mystery, genetics are a determining factor. Raising awareness and improving the diagnosis of PS remains a crucial part of the biomedical community to ensure proper management and treatment for affected children and others alike. To learn more about Paneotopoulos syndrome, please check out the resources used in the presentation today. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media pages. We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below or email us at info at defeatingepilepsy.org. Thank you for your support and together we will defeat epilepsy. Check out our other great videos and subscribe today. You have the power to defeat epilepsy.